Are you ready to make the most of your oil and gas mineral rights? Welcome to the Mineral Rights Podcast. Get the knowledge and resources you need to manage your minerals and royalties. Here is your host, Matt Sands. Hello and welcome to the Mineral Rights Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Sands, and I'm joined by my co-host, Justin Williams. And we're here to help you make the most of your minerals and royalties. Today, we're going to cover the next video in our series of how to navigate the major oil and gas producing state website so that you can find information on your oil and gas wells to make sure that you're getting paid and to see if there may be some new wells that are permitted and if you should have an interest in them. So we're going to show you how to do that for the state of Oklahoma. Justin, this is one that is a little bit trickier than what we've covered so far. You're right, Matt. It seems like we've got to navigate a lot more interfaces in Oklahoma to really get the information you need, but it's there nonetheless. Yeah, it's there if you know where to look. And so that's what we're going to show you today is how to do that. And if you were to search for oil and gas data, Oklahoma, you'd probably get there at some point, but I'll just show you directly it's through the Oklahoma Corporation Commission, which is the agency that regulates oil and gas. So if you go to the Oklahoma Corporation Commission, click on divisions and then oil and gas conservation, and then you'll see a lot of different options here. There's data files that you can go to directly. There are ways you can search uh, databases and things like that. And so we'll kind of do some of that, but one way that is easy to navigate, and that's the well data finder. And so if you were to click the image here, this is the map interface for Oklahoma. They call it the OCC Well Data Finder. And so you can go ahead and open that up. And if you're listening to this episode on the podcast, there, there is an accompanying uh, YouTube video. And I highly recommend you follow us on the YouTube video as well if you have uh, stuff in Oklahoma so that you can follow along on your interests and kind of see how we're doing this stuff because a picture speaks a thousand words. So Justin, let's say that we either inherited some interest recently, or maybe we're looking to purchase some minerals and we're doing due diligence. These are the types of steps that we'd want to follow. You nailed it, Matt. And something worth mentioning here is that, you know, this video assumes that you know how to read a legal description and you have a basic understanding of managing mineral rights. And if you don't, that is really the place to start. Matt, you have a wonderful mineral management basics course um, that can kind of build that foundation for somebody who is at absolute zero. Um, and once you do, as you said, Matt, this is how we're going to go about finding that information to answer the questions uh, that you'll learn about in the basic mineral management course. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. And that actually is what the last module in the course is about after we build the foundation, show you how to uh, navigate the state oil and gas websites like this. And so if you're watching this in the course, then you know this is sort of the culmination of that as you're determining what the oil and gas potential is of your minerals and royalties. And the big question, I know that I use software called Mineral IQ. And the thing I like about Mineral IQ is it'll give you a notification if there are new well permits or new rigs showing up within a two mile radius of your interests. And so doesn't necessarily mean that you'll have an interest in those wells that are in that notification. So this is where you'd have to do a little bit of digging either on Mineral IQ or ultimately going to the Oklahoma Corporation Commission if your interests are in Oklahoma so that you can pull up the permit, you can pull up the plats like we showed you for Texas and Oklahoma, Colorado to see if your mineral tract is within the area that is being pulled together for that new well. So one of the things I'll show you how to do here is navigate the actual map. You know, the first way to do it is you can sort of zoom in and look and see the counties. And in this case, let's say we have minerals that are in Oklahoma County, which is where Oklahoma City is. And so the legal description that I'm looking for is the northwest quarter of Section 1, Township 11 North, Range 2 West of the IM, which stands for Indian Meridian in Oklahoma County, Oklahoma. So the one way to do that is just to zoom in until the townships show up and then you sort of can scroll until you find the one that you're looking for. And in this case, we're looking for Township 11 North, Range 2 West. So I see 2 West here. I have to go down and there's 11 North. So 11 North, 2 West and Section 1, which is the top right corner here. So that's one way to do it is you can just zoom and scroll and find the area that you're looking for. Now, interestingly enough, there are no surface locations of, of wells within the Northwest Quarter. 
And so, you know, at first glance, you may think, oh, I don't have an interest in any oil and gas wells. But if you look up here, there's actually a horizontal well called the Roller 1-36H. That's the surface hole location. The bottom hole location is actually down in section one. So this is a situation where we would need to look at the map and look at the plats to figure out, you know, okay, do I have an interest in this well? And so what you would do here, once you find that information, you can click on that. But before we do that, I want to show you how to search by the legal description in this search bar. And so similar to Texas, you can search to navigate there. If you just hover your mouse over that search bar, it'll give you a little hint. It'll say search address, well API, well name, or STR, which stands for section, township, and range. And they give you a, an example. In this case, if you were looking for section 6, 10 north, 5 west, it would be 0610N for north, 05W for west. And that's uh, something that would zoom into that particular section. And so we'll, let's try that. Let's say if I were to zoom back out here and I know that I'm looking for section 1, so 01, and then township 11 north, so I'm going to say 11N. And then range two west, I should say zero two W, and it'll show me the selection there, so I can click on that, and sure enough, it takes me to that section. So that's another way that you can navigate and find your property. So if you know the legal description, and that's always where it's got to start, Justin, because without the legal description, we just don't really know what we own. You know the map. That that is our address for our property. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. So digging into this roller, well, let's say that we needed to find out more information about it. Click on the well records doc. So there's two different things. It'll just open up a new tab with the basic well information for this well. It'll tell you where, where it's located again. And it has some of the different things, latitude, longitude. You can see permits, which you can click on and click on that here to open in a new tab. And it'll show me the APD, the permit to drill. In this case, this well was permitted in September of 2014. And if I just scroll down, I can see some interesting information. Worth noting that Oklahoma has a statutory pooling. So that basically is where the operator will file to pool different mineral tracks together to be able to drill through them. And so they have to go through the uh, Corporation Commission to get a pooling and spacing order. So pooling order will dictate the area that is being pulled together to extract well and gas, the spacing will determine how many wells can be drilled within those drilling spacing units. So it has the numbers here, which you can go back to the Oklahoma Corporation Commission website and search for those spacing orders to find out more information about the formations that are covered and as well as the spacing. And so it'll tell you some different information about the well spacing, how many wells are approved to be drilled in that section or those sections. But this particular well here shows that it's a horizontal hole and it tells the location here of the uh, bottom hole location and surface location has information about the spacing. And here I can see it's 480 acres, horizontal, uh, regular, and it covers the southwest quarter of section 36 in 12 north, 2 west, and then the west half of section one in 11 north to west, which in this hypothetical situation here, we have an interest in nor the northwest quarter. So we would have an interest in this well here, which is again, the roller 1-36H. So the thing that I would need to know is my lease royalty rate, how many net mineral acres I own. I, I know from this permit that there's 480 acres in that old unit. And so if I divide my net mineral acres by 480 and then multiply that by my lease royalty rate, that'll tell me the decimal interest I should have in this well. So more information can be found in our episode that we did on how to calculate your net revenue interest. So be sure to check out that episode if you need to know how to calculate your decimal interest or what they call the net revenue interest in a well. We walked through step-by-step -step how to do that in another episode. So that's uh, important to know. So it's positive here. We had that information. Right already we're seeing that we have an interest in this well. If we hadn't had minerals in the northwest quarter of section one, we can find out more information here about the completion. It'll dive into things like some of the forms, you know, the initial well test record. So it was 75 barrels per day, 72 MCF of gas per day when they tested it on January 19th, 2015. 
formations. It goes through the hunting. So useful information there. And then, you know, again, you can look at all images. So it has like completion records has a drilling permit. So you can get the PDF files of those as well to, again, save to your computer. So this is the type of thing that I go through my course is how to organize all of these documents, what type of documents you should have if you have minerals and royalties, you know, for the wells, for your minerals, other important documents. And so make sure that you check out the course, which we'll link to in the show notes for the podcast episode, as well as in the description below, if you're watching this on YouTube. So first step there. So one other thing to note for Oklahoma Corporation Commission, you know, the things that we want to find, again, we went through how to find the drilling permits, information about the completion dates and which formations were completed and the depths. You know, we'd want to keep going through this to find out if there's any other information that we'd want to save for this. Ultimately, you'd want to have a plat, uh, which is just a map that shows the location of the well. And that's really one of the big pieces of information you need oftentimes to figure out if you have an interest in a well is just seeing the area that's being pulled together and then, you know, where your minerals fit within that. So we can see here, there's a, a bunch of different documents. That's the permit. So in this case, the, it's a very rudimentary plat, but it does show the spacing unit location here outlined. And this is up here in section 36. You can see the surface hole location in the Northwest quarter. And then they show the bottom hole location. It goes down into section one and so covers the west half of section one. So that's how we can see that our minerals, which are up here in the northwest quarter, are going to be part of this spacing unit. So that's important. You just have to click through. You can see there's multiple files here. These are all files you'd want to save to your computer if you had an interest in this well, just so you have them for easy reference so that each time you don't have to go and try to find it again. So again, like we said, with Colorado, there's useful records like the notification of when they actually spud the well. So this may may have not been available immediately, but sometimes if the well was spud, they'll have the notice that's filed. And then when that's recorded or received by the Oklahoma Corporation Commission, they'll scan it and upload it. So you just, you know, if you had a permitted well on your on your minerals, this is the place you'd want to go to monitor that and see. This is the well browse link. And then there's a well records doc. So you can click on both of those and see the documents there. And again, you'd want to just kind of periodically monitor this. If that permitted well is there, see when they actually give notification that they spud the well, that when they cemented the casing, similar notices are are recorded or, or submitted when they complete the well. And then when they do the well survey. So this just shows the the well bore in the actual location, you know, sort of as built when they when they drilled it, and they use that for updating the well sticks. And in the Oklahoma Corporation Commission website, at least as far as I can tell, they don't have those well bores in there now. If you may remember, for those of you that are familiar with Oklahoma back in the day, previous version of this website was very bad, and there was a lot of data quality issues with those the surface hole location and bottom hole location. So I think they're in the process of cleaning that up. So you won't find those well bores, but hopefully they'll clean that up. And then eventually you'll see where those, the lines for the horizontal wells and where they go. Because otherwise you have to sort of just click around and look for what's going on nearby and seeing what, if there are any wells that are horizontals that go through your, your trap. And then, like I said, the completion report, which, you know, mentions the first production date and things like that. So lots of useful information available on the Oklahoma Corporation Commission. One of the things I wanted to show as well is the fact that the official production records are actually found on the Oklahoma Tax Commission. And so that is the OTC. And so you would need to navigate to the OKTAP website. So that's OKTAP.tax. OK.gov. And what you would be looking for is the public pun search. That's P-U-N. And this is where the official records are for the well production, because that is what severance taxes are based on. And so this is where you can get the monthly production of oil and gas and all of that. So this is the official record. A couple of different ways to search. You can look many different ways. If you just know the well name, you could try that. You can also look by the API number, which I'll show you how to do that. But in this case, the, we're looking for the roller and so you could look for that and then we'd have to kind of scroll down and look for the roll, roller 36 dash or 1 dash 36 h which is here so that's one way to find it the other way would be to search by the api number which is the these numbers here again same with texas where you don't need to enter the first two digits because that is the state code and that for texas you know we mentioned that before you had to just use the last eight digits 
Same thing with Oklahoma, where you have the API number, the first two digits are the state, which is 35 here, and then the rest is county, and then the unique well identifier. So the county here is 109 for Oklahoma County. Unique well identifier is the last five digits of 22429. And so if I were to copy that, excluding the, the, the three five again, I'm going to the public pun search, looking by the API number. And if I were to search for that, yeah, there sure enough, the roller 1-36 shows up. And then when you're looking at the well record, you'll see at the top here, the production history, and that'll pull up the table of all of the different production volumes. And it's by oil and gas, you know, and, and maybe plant products too. I'm not sure. I, I can't remember if they do that, but in this case, they have oil and gas production that's reported. Crude oil is the code one and natural gas is code five. And it shows the marketer. In this case, the oil is, is marketed by Philip 66. And then Blue Mark Energy handles the gas. And so these would be the volumes you want to check against your check stub to make sure it's accurate. And again, you'd be looking by the production month. So in this case, for September of 2023, for crude oil, we want to see that our check reflects the 1,343.43 barrels of oil. And then for gas, if it's got plant products in it, again, it goes back to they'll have a dry gas volume, which will be less than what's reported here. Then they have the NGL volume, but you can at least get a ballpark number to make sure that the amount that you got paid was when including the natural gas liquid should be more than you would have gotten paid if it was just gas. So what you'd look for is this full, you know, wet gas number multiplied by the average price or the price received. And you'd want to make sure that your your check is, you know, at least that much. So useful information here for doing a real rough royalty audit. And Justin, like we've talked about, and we'll link to that episode in the description below and, and also in the show notes for this episode for the episode that we did on how to do a quick end of year tax audit on your royalty checks to make sure that your 1099s that you receive are accurate. And so that's an important thing that we'll have to be doing here in the new year once we get our 1099s. You know the map. And again, Oklahoma was a little bit more fragmented to kind of look through, but all the information is there. It's just a matter of knowing where to look and how to look it up. That's it. So useful information available in, in Oklahoma. Again, maybe not quite as user-friendly as the Railroad Commission website, as, as kind of crazy as that sounds. I think the map interface is better with the Railroad Commission, but the Oklahoma Corporation Commission website is a lot better now than it used to be. So that's definitely moving in the right direction. But again, it's fairly easy to navigate. Once you get the map interface up, you can click on your wells, you can see the permits, you can look at the documents that are there. And all of that is what you need to know in order to figure out if you have an interest in a well. So hopefully this was helpful. Again, make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And again, check out Mineral Management Basics, which is my online course where I show you step-by-step -step the different types of interests, how to do a title search, how to organize your documents so that you can manage them and make sure that you're getting paid what you deserve. So thanks again for watching this video or for listening to the podcast, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks again. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Matt. Thanks so much for listening to the Mineral Rights Podcast with your host, Matt Sands. Don't forget to subscribe and share at mineralrightspodcast.com. The Mineral Rights Podcast should not be construed as investment, legal, or tax advice. All information is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy.